We Christians are not committing a no true Scotsman fallacy when we note Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, and even some progressive Christians are not really Christians. All right, let's see it. And the fit for this video is Deadpool. No True Scotsman is an ad hoc rescue of one's generalization, in which the reasoner recharacterizes the situation solely in order to escape refutation of the generalization. To better explain what that means, we can look at the original example that Anthony Flew came up with when he coined the fallacy. No Scotsman puts sugar on his porridge, but my Uncle Angus is a Scotsman and he puts sugar on his porridge, but no true Scotsman puts sugar on his porridge. As you can see, for the first person, what makes someone a true Scotsman is some arbitrary or ad hoc reason that really has nothing to do with being a Scotsman. So this is not accurate. The fallacy does not depend upon the identified feature being arbitrary or meaningless. The fallacy depends upon a generalization being altered so that the boundaries are constricted and a provided counterexample is definitionally excluded. So a no true Scotsman fallacy is when we start with a generalization and someone provides a counterexample and then we change the generalization in order to omit that counterexample. There are multiple steps in a no true Scotsman fallacy. So just denying broadly that Mormons are Christians is not even eligible to be considered a no true Scotsman fallacy because there is not a generalization that has been altered. Someone is just asserting necessary and sufficient features for membership in the category of Christian. And this is not what we Christians are doing when we note someone like a Mormon is not really a Christian because we're not dismissing their claim to be a Christian from an arbitrary reason, but from a meaningful reason. So that has no relationship to a no true Scotsman fallacy. So if someone just says, oh, Mormons aren't Christians because of X, that's not a no true Scotsman fallacy. However, if they say, well, Christians believe this, and somebody says, well, what about Mormons? And they say, well, real Christians or authentic Christians or orthodox Christians uh, or historical Christians or something like that, that then becomes a no true Scotsman fallacy because the generalization has been altered to definitionally exclude the provided counter example. And in that case, it doesn't matter if the feature that is identified is meaningless or meaningful or arbitrary or not, because what matters is whether or not the generalization has been altered. Words have to have a coherent meaning. No, they don't. And we Christians who are allowed to define the boundaries of our own belief system and what we mean by the term Christian, which we use to describe ourselves. So that would be all and good if all people who identified as Christian had a seat at the table and had a hand in determining what the criteria and methodologies were going to be for drawing the boundary around the concept of Christian. But that's not what's going on here because this creator has already drawn the boundaries around the people who get to draw the boundaries. And so the boundaries have already been drawn before we even get to drawing the boundaries. And that's just flagrant circular reasoning. A Christian is someone who holds to orthodox beliefs and doctrines, the faith that was handed down from the apostles and what is taught in scripture. If you reject an essential doctrine, like the Trinity or the physical resurrection of Jesus, you're rejecting an essential aspect of what it is to be a Christian. Therefore, we will not accept that you're a Christian. So there are three main fallacies going on here. First, we have that circular reasoning of drawing boundaries so that we can determine who gets to be in the group that draws those same boundaries. Uh, but we also have an appeal to definition, this notion that you can reduce conceptual categories and particularly social identities to a short list of necessary and sufficient features. But that's not how conceptual categories and particularly social identities are developed, are learned, or are used. So appealing to such features is a fallacy. And finally, this list of necessary and sufficient features actually excludes pretty much all Christians who lived during the life of Jesus or within two or three generations of his life. Since the Trinity and the concept of Jesus as fully God and fully man are much later and very complex philosophical frameworks that developed within specific historical and social contexts. And so nobody living in the first, second, and even into the third centuries CE would have qualified as Christian 
according to this specific list of necessary and sufficient features. And while apologists will insist that, even though we don't see the articulation of these ideologies until the fourth and fifth centuries CE, we can assume they uh, were in circulation earlier, the data don't support that, and that's not the academic consensus. Notice we're not rejecting someone's claim to be a Christian from an arbitrary aspect, but a meaningful aspect. Therefore, we're not committing the no true Scotsman fallacy. And as you can see in the definition on the screen, whether or not the feature is arbitrary or meaningful plays no role in whether or not it is a no true Scotsman fallacy. But to meaningfully be a Christian, you have to fit the definition of a Christian, and that means you have to accept essential core doctrines. No, you absolutely don't. This is another appeal to definition, and definitions have absolutely no authority beyond that group of people that agrees with the definition. And there's no definition of Christian that is endorsed by the majority of Christians around the world, much less all Christians around the world. And even in the United States, the majority of Christians accept Mormons as Christians. And the only denomination in which there's just a plurality of members who reject the Christianity of Mormons is white evangelicals, the group most committed to structuring power and values and boundaries to serve their own interests. These are not arbitrary boundaries. They are fallacious, they have no authority beyond the groups that accept them, and yes, they frequently are arbitrary. As the philosopher Aeon Scobble says, Now I'm good. <laughs>